I'm Asher Fink, and you're watching WCAT Summer Edition. With school fast approaching, a bit too fast for some of us, you may want to know whether or not we are returning to the campus in the fall. The answer is yes, though all students and staff will be required to wear masks and observe social distancing, as well as wash hands after almost every activity. We do not know yet whether or not sports will continue, but we have a pretty good idea that football and some of the basketball season will be held without fans. Now let's go to Alex Sugden with current events in the U.S. and the rest of the world. Thanks, Asher. The topics for today will be transportation-based. Let's begin. First, we will be heading across the Pacific to Japan, where the Shinkansen, or bullet train, now is not only record-breaking, but can also withstand an earthquake. For now, the new cars, the N700S, which stands for N700 Supreme, only run between Tokyo and Osaka. The updated Shinkansen can now run as fast as 224 miles an hour, though the operating speed caps at just 117 miles an hour. It is the first update to the Shinkansen in 13 years. Apart from the gold logo, the only exterior features that are new are the chubbier cheeks and sleeker headlight design. On the inside, though, the newly designed seats recline more, which makes it more comfortable for people, especially long-haul passengers, and each seat also has its own power outlet. The exterior lighting has been improved, and there is more space for luggage. The new model was released on July 1st. For other news, we are now heading to Florida, where a company called Space Perspective has created a balloon to take travelers seeking adventure 62 miles up to the edge of space. The test flight of the balloon, called Spaceship Neptune, in 2021 will be uncrewed and will instead be carrying research equipment. Later, though, you can take the six-hour jump for the small price of $125,000. It's already possible to book on the company's website. Because I really needed a third topic, we're now not go only going to go through space, but also through time. You're in the year 2030 and sitting in a comfortable pod elevated in a vacuum tube whizzing across the country at nearly 700 miles an hour. Have you guessed it? No? Well, I'm talking about the Hyperloop, the futuristic, eco-friendly vacuum train. Because of political power arguments, codes, and so forth, and also because of having so many technical difficulties, people are arguing over whether Hyperloop should be regulated by railway authorities or aviation because it's both elevated off the track and runs on a railway. 2030 is the most feasible outlook for this type of transport, but then in the words of Kelly from Virgin Hyperloop 1, this is a marathon, not a sprint. I'm Alex Sugden, and this is WCAT. Now back to you, Asher. Because I'm subbing for Isabel, this is not going to be the kind of sports news you would normally get. Let's start. First, I'm going to take you across the Atlantic to England, where a certain group of people are doing just as good at a job during coronavirus. Storor, a group of seven people who do the extreme sport of parkour, which is a training discipline that involves the practitioners, also called tracers or tracers, trying to get from point A to point B as fast as possible without anything assisting them in a complex environment, such as between the roofs of two skyscrapers or from a bridge onto a moving boat. It should not be confused with the similar sport of free running, which shows the acrobatic side of parkour. That means that leaping from one building to another is parkour, but doing a flip in the process is free running. It's derived from Asian martial arts. Anyway, Storor is a group of parkouring YouTubers who are doing just as well as they normally would, even through the UK's measures against coronavirus. That is all I have for today. Now back to you, Asher. Thank you, Alex. I'm Asher Fink, and we'll see you next time on WCAT Summer Edition.